Hello and welcome to the third episode of our vocabulary series, where we'll look at the technical words that will help you pass the TOEFL test with flying colors. In the previous two episodes, we talked about important vocabulary for astronomy and zoology. Today it's time to delve into the field of biology and discuss 40 words related to the subject that often appear on the TOEFL test. Let me know how many words you know in the comments below and write winner if you know them all. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more TOEFL tips and tricks and click the bell icon to get notified when the next video comes out. Let's get started! Let's begin with enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions in your body. They are needed whenever your body or cells are doing a chemical reaction. For example, enzymes are essential for digesting food. They break down nutrients into smaller molecules that your body can absorb. They help speed up all these reactions, and without enzymes, many vital processes would be too slow to keep people healthy. 2. Symbiosis Symbiosis is a close relationship between two different species, where they live together and can help each other. For example, bees and flowers. Bees collect nectar from flowers to make honey, which provides them with food. In the process, bees help pollinate flowers, which allows flowers to reproduce. This is symbiosis, because both bees and flowers benefit from the interaction. 3. Receptor A structure on a cell that receives signals. This word is often used in the TOEFL reading passages. For example, I have recently worked with the passage about infrared receptors in snakes. Let's look at the first sentence of this passage. It's thought that the facial pits, or pit organs, on the head of some snakes are specialized infrared heat receptors. So, an infrared receptor is a specialized sensory organ that detects heat emitted by warm-blooded animals. They are located in the pit organs of the head of the snake and allow the snake to find its prey, even in total darkness, which is very helpful when hunting. 4. Mitosis This word also appears frequently in biology texts and lectures. It's a process of cell division in which the parent cell makes two new daughter cells, each with the same number of chromosomes as the parent. To do this, it goes through several different phases to divide and then rebuild the chromosomes. Simply put, mitosis is a way cells divide. 5. Genome The complete set of DNA, genetic material of an organism. For example, a human genome is all the DNA found in a human cell. It has about 20,000 to 25,000 genes spread across 23 pairs of chromosomes. These genes contain the instructions that are necessary to build and maintain a human being. 6. Stimulus Anything that causes a response in an organism. For example, light is a stimulus that makes a plant grow toward it. The plural of stimulus is stimuli. In the text about snakes that I've just mentioned, there was a part about a variety of stimuli, such as sound, vibration, or light of moderate intensity. So remember? Stimulus, stimuli. If you feel that many of the words we've just covered are unfamiliar to you, it means that your technical vocabulary needs to be expanded. Study subjects such as biology, geology, history, zoology, geography, psychology, astronomy, art, and anthropology. Learn the most basic terms in each field and then do lots of reading to not only memorize these words, but also to learn about the subject. You can also use the vocabulary lists for different topics that we have created in our TOEFL prep course. They contain the most important words you'll see on the TOEFL test. And remember that a large vocabulary is only half of your TOEFL score. The other half is knowing the right strategies, avoiding panic, and being able to adapt your strategies quickly depending on the question. You can find all of this in our TOEFL prep course. So if your exam is coming up and you want feedback on the writing and speaking sections, feel free to check it out. I'll leave the link in the description below. Let's move on. 7. Estrogen A hormone that controls female reproductive functions and affects other processes in the body. The next word in our list is mutation. A mutation is a change in DNA that can create new traits or cause health problems. There is also the verb to mutate. 
cells can mutate at different times and due to different factors. Nine, photosynthesis. This is one of the most common biology words on the TOEFL test. As you probably all know, photosynthesis is the process plants use to convert sunlight into energy. Plants use photosynthesis to make their own food from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. 10. Cellular respiration. The process by which cells make energy from food. The adjective cellular means related to the cells of a plant or animal. As we've just discussed, cellular respiration is how cells get energy from food. So what happens during this process? Cells take in nutrients from the food you eat, such as sugars. Inside the cell, these nutrients and oxygen are combined in a process that creates energy. This energy is then used by the cell to perform its functions, like moving, growing, or dividing. The process also produces waste products, like carbon dioxide and water, that the cell needs to get rid of. So, cellular respiration is like a mini power plant inside your cells that turns food and oxygen into the energy your body needs to work. 11. Homeostasis. Homeostasis is how your body maintains a stable internal environment, like keeping your body temperature just right. For example, if you get too hot, your body sweats to cool down. If you are too cold, your body shivers to produce heat. Both of these actions help keep your body temperature stable. 12. Chloroplast. A chloroplast is the part of a plant cell where photosynthesis takes place, converting sunlight into food. The next two words are genotype and phenotype. The difference between genotype and phenotype is what is encoded in your genes versus what you can actually see or experience. The genotype is the specific set of genes that an organism has. For example, if a person has the genetic code for blue eyes, that code is their genotype. It's the genetic information they inherit from their parents. Now, the phenotype is the observable traits or characteristics of an organism that results from the interaction between the genotype and the environment. The actual blue eye color that you see in a person is their phenotype. It's how the genotype manifests itself in the physical appearance or behavior of the organism. In short, genotype is about the genetic code like genes for eye color. Phenotype is about the physical expression of that code. For example, having blue eyes. The next two words are eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Eukaryotes and prokaryotes are two basic types of cells that differ mainly in their internal structures. Eukaryotes are cells with a nucleus and other specialized parts, like those in plants and animals. Prokaryotes are simpler cells without a nucleus, such as bacteria. Eukaryotes are more complex and larger, while prokaryotes are smaller and less complex. 17. Speciation. Speciation is the process by which new species form, often when populations separate and evolve differently. On the TOEFL, you'll often see this word in reading passages and hear it in lectures. For example, on the Galapagos Islands, different bird species evolved from a common ancestor. Each species adapted to different food sources and environments, resulting in variations in beak size and shape. 18. Amino acids. Amino acids are the basic building blocks of proteins, which are important for cell structure and function. Another word is lipids. These are fats and oils that store energy and are important components of cell membranes. 20. Neurons. Neurons are nerve cells that carry messages throughout the body, helping with thoughts, feelings, and movement. For example, neurons transmit electrical signals between the brain, spinal cord, and other parts of the body, allowing us to think, feel, and control movement. Another word we'll cover today is cortisol. You've probably heard this word before. Cortisol is a hormone released during stress that helps your body cope with challenging situations. Some typical sentences using this word are When you're stressed, your body produces more cortisol to help you cope. Over time, high levels of cortisol can lead to health problems, such as high blood pressure and weakened immune function. 22. Anaerobic Processes that occur without oxygen, for example, anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic 
means without oxygen. Anaerobic bacteria, unlike humans, don't need oxygen to survive. 23. Secrete. To secrete means to produce and release a liquid. I've heard this word used a few times on TOEFL speaking. There was a lecture in question 4 that mentioned that some plants secrete a sticky substance. So remember, when a cell or gland releases a substance, such as sweat or saliva, to perform a specific function, we can use the verb to secrete. 24. RNA. A molecule involved in protein synthesis and gene expression. 25. DNA. The molecule that carries genetic information. 26. Moisture. A liquid such as water in the form of very small droplets, either in the air, in a substance, or on the surface. For example, a rich soil retains moisture. 27. Foliage. The leaves of a plant. 28. Hibernation. A period of rest in some animals during the winter to conserve energy when food is scarce. This word is very common in TOEFL lectures. One of the lectures I like to analyze with my students is about hibernation. We can also use the verb to hibernate, which means to go into a deep sleep during the winter. Animals like bears, hedgehogs, and chipmunks hibernate in winter. Another word to discuss is the verb to forage. It means to look for food in the wild. A forager is someone who searches for food. Humans can also be foragers. Historically, early human societies were hunter-gatherers who foraged for nuts, seeds, and other edible plants, as well as hunted animals. Even today, some people practice foraging as a hobby. Foragers may gather wild mushrooms, berries, herbs, and other natural foods. Now, foraging refers to the act of searching for and collecting wild food resources. The next word is scavenger. It's an animal that eats dead plants or animals, helping to clean up the environment. Some examples of scavengers are vultures and ravens. As unpleasant as scavenging may seem, it's important to remember that scavengers play a crucial role in ecosystems by helping to recycle nutrients and reduce the spread of disease. 31. Internal. Internal means happening or existing inside. For example, internal mechanisms or processes occur within an organism. Digestion is an internal process. Now, external is existing or happening outside a person, a company, a place, or a country. Factors or stimuli that come from outside an organism are called external. 33. Species. A species is a distinct group of animals or plants that share common characteristics and can interbreed. Your poodle and your bulldog are the same species, but your hamster and your goldfish are not. The next two words are food web and food chain. A food web is a network of who eats whom in an ecosystem, showing how energy moves through living things. Now, a food chain is a sequence of organisms where each one is eaten by the next, starting with plants. Food chains and food webs often appear in TOEFL lectures and integrated speaking tasks. The next word is ecosystem. I've already used it a few times in this video. It's a community of living things, such as plants and animals, that interact with each other and their environment, such as air, water, and soil. It's like a complex web where everything depends on everything else. 37. Heterotroph. A heterotroph is an animal that can't make its own food supply, so it must eat other things, such as plants or other animals, to survive. Humans are heterotrophs because we eat plants or meat to stay alive. There are three types of heterotrophs – herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Herbivores eat grass, carnivores eat other animals, and omnivores eat both. 38. Autotroph – Plants that produce their own food are called autotrophs. Plants, algae, and some bacteria are autotrophs and form the basis of food chain. 39. Crustacean. A crustacean is a member of class of arthropods that live in water. These aquatic animals have exoskeletons. Some of your favorite seafood comes from crustaceans, crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. If you don't know the words arthropods or aquatic, you should check out the previous episode where we talked about zoology vocabulary. Finally, the last word is biodiversity. Biodiversity is a shortened form of two words biological diversity. Biological refers to the study of life forms. Diversity means many and different. 
When you have many animals or plants living in one place, you have biodiversity. For example, scientists believe that the deep ocean may be as rich in biodiversity as the planet's tropical rainforests. These are 40 biology words you'll see a lot on the TOEFL test. Knowing them will help you understand passages and lectures. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more TOEFL tips and tricks. And remember, scoring 100 plus on the TOEFL isn't rocket science. It's the little things you do that make all the difference. As always, I wish you all a stellar TOEFL score. See you next time. Bye-bye.